Have you ever wondered as to what would happen if our world were even slightly different? How your life would be different if you were born a thousand years ago instead of today? Or maybe how our history would be different if the continents were located differently? Or perhaps how the life in our very own solar system would have developed if the sun were perhaps 10% larger? Well, playing with these kinds of possibilities is what many astrophysicists do for a living, but with the entire universe. Some of them make model universes in a computer. Model universes that have different originations, composed of different amounts of material. And then they compare these universes to our own to see how they evolved and what they're made of. This process of using measurements of the sky to test our existing models have taught us tons about our universe already. But by far, one of the strangest things scientists have discovered is that most of the material our universe is made of is entirely different from you and I. But without it, the universe wouldn't exist as we know it. Everything we can see with telescopes, stars, solar systems, whole galaxies make up just about 5% of the total universe. The rest of it, 95% of it, doesn't even emit or absorb light. Our universe is incomprehensibly large. We humans cannot even begin to fathom the sheer distances and sizes of stars, galaxies, and space as a whole. There is so much more to what meets our eyes. However, we can't see it with our eyes, nor can we detect it with microwaves, radio waves, or even visible light. But we know it's out there because of the influence it has on what we can see. It's sort of like mapping the surface of Earth and everything on it using just a picture of our planet from space at night time. You'd get some rough ideas as to where there is light, but the majority of it is, in, is invisible to you. Everything from mountain ranges to people. Using these limited clues, we must infer as to what lies there. We call this invisible stuff dark matter. Now, a lot of people may have heard of dark matter, although it still might seem abstract, far away, and probably even irrelevant. Well, interestingly, dark matter is actually all around us, probably in this very room as I speak. As a matter of fact, these dark matter particles are probably going through your body at this second. And that's because we're on Earth. And Earth is spinning around the sun. And the sun is hurtling through our galaxy at about 800,000 kilometers per hour. But this elusive matter just passes right through us. Now, how do we understand more about it? How do we understand its significance to our existence? Well, in order to figure out our origin, we first need to understand our galaxy's origin. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. What did it look like 10 billion years in the past? What will it look like 10 billion years in the future? What about the billions of galaxies that scientists have already mapped out with surveys of the sky? Would the evolution of them be different if there were variations in the, in the amount of matter present in the universe? So the interesting thing about these model universes is that they allow scientists to test for these possibilities. Now let's go back to one of the first moments of the universe, just a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. There was no matter at all at that time. Then the universe was expanding extremely fast. Now quantum mechanics tells us that at every moment, matter is simultaneously being created and destroyed all the time. However, at this time, space was expanding fast so incredibly fast that the matter that popped into existence couldn't be destroyed. Thus, scientists infer that all of the matter was created at this time, the dark matter and the regular matter that you and I are made up of. Fast forward slightly to a time after matter was created, after neutrons and protons were formed, even after hydrogen atoms were formed, around 400,000 years after the Big Bang. Our universe was incredibly dense and hot, but imperfectly smooth. There were places that were a little denser and hotter than others. Those places had either more or less mass, and those areas enlarged because of gravity. Our universe was expanding, getting increasingly less dense over the last 14 billion years. However, gravity persisted and was able to pull more and more mass into those regions. Eventually, enough matter clumps into one place that it allows for the hydrogen gas to separate from the dark matter that it was originally mixed with and form stars eventually forming small galaxies. Over longer periods of time, into the billions of years, these small galaxies merge with each other in spectacular fashion and increase in size to form galaxies, like ours, the Milky Way. 
but there's a problem if you don't have sufficient enough matter if you don't have enough matter those spots simply never get clumpy enough as it turns out before forming stars there must be matter equivalent to a million times the mass of our sun in a really dense region without dark matter you simply cannot get sufficient matter into that particular region in a universe with no dark matter you wouldn't find this type of clumping simply because there isn't enough matter for gravity to do its job in that universe you wouldn't get our galaxy or any other galaxy the milky way wouldn't exist no with the sun we wouldn't exist in that universe another key insight was to observe the rotational speed of galaxies our observed rotations are simply impossible if dark matter weren't present if it wasn't present the outer parts of galaxies should move far slower than the inner parts of galaxies but this isn't what we observed what we did observe however is that all the parts of the galaxies rotate at roughly the same speed all right so this crazy stuff dark matter it makes up most of the mass in the universe and it's passing through us all right now and we wouldn't be here without it well what is it the truth is we have no idea but scientists have plenty of educated guesses and several theories on how to find out more majority of physicists think dark matter is a particle in many ways like the subatomic particles we know of such as protons electrons and neutrons they think this because it also behaves extremely similar in terms of gravity however it just doesn't interact with light and it just passes straight through regular matter as if it were a ghost they love to know what particle it is for example how light or how heavy it is or are they missing something when it interacts with regular matter scientists have a lot of great candidates for what it could be but it is incredibly difficult because the ideas they have currently span a massive range dark matter could be as massive as a hundred suns or even as small as a point particle so what do we do now well scientists have several ways of detecting dark matter firstly we're building detectors in deep underground mines that are extremely sensitive they hope that a dark matter particle that was passing through earth would leave a trace of its passage after passing through the detector secondly they're looking to the skies for the possibility that these uh, that these particles could collide and create high energy radiation that they could detect using special gamma ray telescopes in fact they even try to make dark matter here on earth they do this by smashing particles together and observing the effects and aftermath using facilities like the large hadron collider located in switzerland well these experiments have confirmed a lot about what dark matter isn't but not what it is there were really good ideas that dark matter could have been detected using these experiments but scientists haven't seen them yet so they have to continue thinking and looking harder another insight into dark matter is to study galaxies i've already spoken as to how our galaxy and many others wouldn't exist if not for dark matter well similar models are also able to predict stuff like the distribution of galaxies in our universe as well as their evolution and their movement and scientists can test those predictions with observations from the sky allow me to provide you with two examples of the kinds of measurements we can make using galaxies firstly we map out the universe using galaxies a survey called the dark energy survey has made the largest map of the universe so far they measure the shapes and positions of over 100 million galaxies that span over 1/8 of the sky the map shows us a region of the sky and all the matter it contains inferred by the light distortion from around the 100 million galaxies the light distorted from all of that matter was between those galaxies and us and the gravity of that matter there is strong enough to bend the path of light and these maps allow us to infer the quantity as well as the location of dark matter and to understand how it evolves over time we're attempting to learn about our universe on the largest of scales but it turns out even the smallest galaxies in our universe provide us with insightful clues Well why is that let's hypothesize with two variations of dark matter cold and warm imagine a galaxy like ours but with several clumps of matter around it that galaxy has dark matter that is cold the cold dark matter particles move slower than warm dark matter particles if the dark matter particles are moving quickly the gravity in these small clumps is simply too weak to slow these fast particles down so they keep going never collapsing into these small clumps ultimately you end up with far fewer of them than the galaxy than a galaxy without uh, cold dark matter does and if those small clumps don't exist 
we get far fewer small galaxies. So we know that ga around galaxies like ours, a spiral galaxy, the dark matter is relatively cold as it is able to form several small clumps. In fact, if you could look up at the southern sky, you can actually see two of the small galaxies I just spoke about. They are the largest of these small galaxies that orbit the Milky Way. And they're known as the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud. In recent years, scientists have detected plenty more, even smaller galaxies. So small that some of them have just around a few hundred stars. Compare this to our Milky Way that has a few hundred billion stars. That makes these tiny galaxies incredibly rare to find. But with improved scientific knowledge, we now know of around 60 tiny galaxies orbiting our very own Milky Way. These tiny guys are ironically some of the biggest clues to understanding dark matter. Simply the existence of these galaxies allows us to infer that dark matter, whatever it is, cannot be moving very fast, as not much could happen when it interacts with regular matter. In the next few years, scientists hope to make far more accurate maps of our sky. They will help refine our models for not just galaxies, but the whole universe. Physicists are additionally making increasingly sensitive equipment to detect dark matter. But it's still a huge mystery, one of the biggest mysteries in science currently. And it sure is an exciting time to be working on this. Scientists have really clear evidence it exists, but will we actually find it and figure out what it is? I'm optimistic, but it will definitely lead to new insightful scientific possibilities and journeys. Regardless of whether humans discover what it actually is, I sincerely hope I've convinced you that the mystery of dark matter is actually really close to home. The search for dark matter could just be the key to a completely new understanding of physics as well as our place in the universe. Thank you.